go. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Tonight we have Shelly Armstrong with Shell's Bells and I'm excited for what she's gonna share with us tonight. Um, I would love for you, Shelly, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background, um, about your business, and if you would like, and what you're gonna talk to us about um, really fast. If you guys can just keep your cameras on and yourselves muted, unless Shelly asks you questions, just so that if you have a dog like we do in the background, it's not too <laughs> disturbing. Um, mine's sitting right here growling out the window. So I'm gonna mute myself in just a second. Um, so make sure that when she asks you questions, you, you unmute yourself, you feel free to drop some stuff in the chat box if you don't want to ask out loud that's fine too and i'll i'll relay it to her because i think it still only goes to me um but thank you so much for your time tonight shelly and for being here with us tonight and i'm going to hand it over to you absolutely thank you so much sandy and hi you guys good to meet you all virtually and happy you're here tonight so um, as Sandy said, my name is Shelly Armstrong, and I have an events and wedding company called Shell's Bells Events, um, which I have recently started, um, and I'm following my passion for doing what I love so much um, and have just started this new career. It's been something that I have done on the side in my previous careers, so um, I decided to take the leap of faith. Um, go where God was calling me and to start my own event planning business. So I'm happy to talk to you guys about any of that might be um, calling on some helpers at some point. Um, but my previous experience is really in nonprofits. So um, Rise Up Cooperative is near and dear to my heart. I've been following this um, organization since its inception um, during COVID and I've loved to, the um, all the values that it presents and the wonderful learning opportunities. So I'm thrilled to be asked to present today to you guys. Um, so 30 years of fundraising experience with nonprofit organizations. That's what I've got um, in my corner and gives me that expert title when it comes to asking for favors. Um, when you're in the nonprofit business, uh, that's exactly what it is. It's not for profit. It, um, the money that you make goes towards the programs and the initiatives and the mission statement of that nonprofit. Um, it doesn't necessarily go to um, big salaries or um, big buildings or things like that. So um, you learn to ask for a lot of things, whether it's funding or um, food or time. Um, that is kind of what my whole world was for 30 years. So I was with the American Heart Association for most of that time. I worked with my church um, for 10 years. So that was really fun. And then most recently, I worked with the Chenick Area Food Bank, um, which I know that you guys are probably very familiar with that more so than the other organizations that I've worked for. So um, there you go. So I have um, been asked to talk to you guys about the word, the dirty little two letter word, um, N-O, no, that hurts. That's, that's what I decided to call this uh, topic tonight to, to kind of work with you guys and let you know that no is a dirty little word. We don't like to hear it and it really hurts when we hear it, whether it's from our friend, or our parent, or our teacher, um, you know, it could be from our pet. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, you know, calling your pet, and they're like, you know, that's, that's kind of a rejection, that's kind of a no, so um, it hurts a lot, and when you're in the business that I'm in, um, you hear it a lot, you actually hear a lot more no's than you do yeses, so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about today, I'll, I'll answer any questions and please, please, please take yourself off mute. Um, but I wanted to go around um, and just get somebody, I, if I could get two volunteers to tell me your net, just your first name, how old you are, and the most recent no you've gotten. So it could be any kind of question, something that you wanted that you were told no for. Any volunteers? 
Okay. I bet Allie and Izzy could probably both give me a recent question that you've asked them and told no from. Okay, so uh, it was our age, name, and or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm Allie. I'm 15. And I don't know. Oh, okay. So just like 10 minutes ago, I asked for an ice cream bar and I was told no. So who, who did you ask? My mother. And how did you ask her? I said, well, okay. So I made banana cream pie last night and she ate the last slice. So I said, can we have a Twix bar, a Twix ice cream bar since you ate the last cream pie? And she said, no. So. Okay. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Like it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allie. Izzy. How about you, girl? I can't hear you. No, I think we're having technical difficulties with Izzy tonight. Sorry, will you hold your story for me and we'll fix it. How about Blake? You have a no for me? Um, probably um, just a couple minutes ago, I asked for... Um, if anybody, if Izzy actually had any more of these things from the top of bottles, I can, oh. and she said no. <laughs> okay, so that was something you really, what, why did she say no? Because she didn't have any. Okay, so thank you so much, volunteers, voluntold. I appreciate you guys for contributing. Those are two really great examples because Allie's no was something that she could probably have gotten a yes for, right? Like her no, if her mom had really felt sorry for her and knowing that she needed that extra sugar tonight, her mom could have said yes, but she got a no. And in your case, Blake, you asked for something from Izzy, a, a finite item that she either had a yes or a no to, right? There was no in between. She either had some or she didn't have some. So she said, nope, don't have any. That probably didn't hurt as bad as the no Allie got. The ice cream sandwich she probably really, really wanted more so than you really, really wanted the pop top, right? Yeah, but still you're probably, are you, what are you collecting those for? Those are pretty cool. Uh, for my friend, he has a lot of them. Yeah, and what's he doing with them? Yeah, he just puts them on a like a keychain. Oh, okay. You know that um, there's some organizations that you can donate those to, and somehow they turn it into fun funding. So y'all might want to look into that when he gets a ton, you know, like gallons of them, and see if you can donate them. That might be cool because it's aluminum, right? So, okay, so what I want to do, thank you guys. I appreciate those stories so much. Um, all right, whenever you are asking somebody for something, um, it could be that you are wanting a dessert or you're wanting an item, but sometimes it could be that you're in business. So you guys are all going to grow up and be in business at some point or making some sort of living and you might need to ask a, um, for someone's business and they may say no to you and that might be a little bit more personal um, like gosh they don't want me to be there or maybe you're asking your parents if you can stay out late you know past your curfew and you know because you're really wanting to do something fun with um, your your friends or there's a school dance that you want to go to um, or maybe you are on the cheerleading squad at your school or the soccer team and you're trying to raise money to go to a tournament right so how do you take that um, ask and look at all the different things that could happen and, you know, kind of work your way to getting a yes instead of a no. So it could be 
you know, can I drive your car? You know, I'm, I'm 16 and I want to go, I want to drive your car. Um, and your mom says, uh, no, well, I'm 16 and you've got a car and I need to go to the store to get some new, some printing paper for my project. Um, so I need your car. And they say, no. And you're like, what? But so that, then you're starting to argue. And then your mama and your daddy might say no even harder, like digging their feet in a little bit more than that. So, um, but if you went to your mom and your dad and said, I really need to borrow your car this, this tonight because I'm out of printing paper and I've got a big project that's due tomorrow. And um, I didn't think ahead enough, uh, enough. And so now I'm in a bind. Could I please borrow the car? Because you told that the story of why, the narrative of why you need that car, you might have a better chance of getting a, a, a yes from that. So sometimes it's the way in which you ask and um, to, to get you to that yes instead of the no. But um, depending on what you're asking for and looking at your audience, and you know, in both cases, um, you guys were asking family members for something that you want. Um, can anybody give me an example of when you would go somewhere out of your family um, to ask for maybe something for a school project or a fundraiser or raising money for Rise Up or doing something that you're passionate about? Can somebody give me another example of when you might be asking for something? Hey, Allie, go for it. So I'm doing this fundraiser for my school. Um, we're selling raffle tickets for $10 to raise money for tuition assistance. And um, I was going from house to house in my neighborhood, um, I think Sunday. And I went to this one house and she like answered the door, but she didn't open it. She talked through her like, like little side window. And she like basically told me if I wasn't selling chocolate to go away. Oh, <laughs> what did you do? Um, I, well, before she asked me like what I was doing and I told her that I was selling, uh, I was doing a fundraiser for my school and she's like, well, are you selling chocolate? And I was like, no. And she said like, go away. So I just like said, thank you for your time and left. Okay. Well, good. At least you said, thank you for your time. That's really good because you never want to burn a bridge, right? You always want to be courteous to someone you're asking a favor from. And <clears throat> usually it gets to be, you know, did you have a, like a little bit of intimidation before you walked up the, to their door and knocked on the door to ask? Like, were you a little nervous? Not really. Because you thought, oh, well, of course they're going to buy this raffle ticket, right? Like what's, what's, tell me what's in it for me if I buy a raffle ticket. Um, well, there's at the end of the year, there's 16 winners and like each person can win a cash prize. Their ticket is drawn. So like, and okay. the cash price can go all the way up to five thousand dollars. Woo! So my ten dollar raffle ticket may give me five thousand, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so what is that ten dollars going to help? Like, I'm going to give you ten dollars. I get a raffle ticket. I might win five thousand, but why should I give you that ten dollars? Well, six dollars, six dollars and fifty cents goes back to the school for um, just things the school needs, and then the other part goes back to. Um, like the main overhead of the school so they can pay for the cash prizes. Okay. So um, is it important to you to raise money for your school? Yeah, I would say it is. Why? Um, because personally, we don't really use tuition assistance, but I know a lot of my friends who like can't go to school without it. Right. Okay. So keeping, like people at school that like want to be there. Okay, that's, that's great. So do you know of anybody specifically without giving me a name that may have been on tuition assistance and may have yeah. benefited from this program? Definitely. Are they smart? Yeah, sometimes. Are they kind? Yeah. Do they deserve to be at your school? Yeah, definitely. Are they a good student? Mm-hmm. So next time you go and ask somebody to buy a $10 raffle ticket, maybe you start off by saying, 
I've got this, I've got a really good friend at my school who needs help with her tuition. And by help, by buying this raffle ticket where you could win $5,000 at the end of the year, you're helping her come to my school and get the same education that, um, you know, get a, a great education that she deserves. You know, so make it personal to you. You know, I know you go to a great school and I know that that $10 is going to help so much. But if you make it a story, then the next person that comes, she's going to she's going to think about your story and she may stop you next time you're walking down the street and say, hey, Allie, I want one of those raffle tickets, you know, because it's resonated with her. Why the why that you're doing that? So I think if we're talking about um, anything in general, just like um, asking to borrow the car or um, seeing if you wanted a five dollar um, raise in your allowance something like that, um, give the story about why you need that $5 increase in your allowance or why you need to stay out past curfew or why your school needs to have tuition assistance for these great kids that it's not their fault that their families, you know, can't afford to send them to the same school. They may have had, um, you know, a, a sudden death in their family or loss of job due to COVID, um, they could have had extenuating circumstances that are beyond anybody's control. So why should they be punished? You know, um, so think about the why. Um, same thing if you were talking about, um, I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, so my most recent job was with the food bank, right? Do you guys know, just show hands, what the food bank does? So it is, um, what we do is we help people um, with food just temporarily. So it's not like to provide them with groceries for a you know, full month or to only get food from the food bank. It's just to provide some assistance. So my job was raising money. And because the food bank has been in the um, forefront so much, I didn't have to really explain to people why I was asking for money. You know, I'm coming to the America, I'm coming to you with a request for funding for the Chattanooga Area Food Bank. Would you please give me five thousand dollars? Well, okay. You know why? Why do you need five thousand dollars? Well, you've seen us in the news. You've seen the people lining up around the block that need food because of COVID. Duh. You know we need your funding. Give me five thousand dollars. Well, that probably is going to get me a big fat dirty word. N O no because I am showing no passion for why I need that $5,000. I'm showing no um, empathy towards the donor of, you know, he might be a wealthy person or company or, um, you know, organization that could afford $5,000 to the food bank and it would be put to great use. But if I'm not telling them the why we need it, the who it's affecting, the story behind that ask, it's super easy for them to say no. It's super easy to say, if you're not selling chocolate, get away from here. If you're not selling me a story, get away from here. If you're not selling me what I'm desiring, what I'm needing, what I'm going to hold on to. So um, developing that story is really important when you're going for something bigger than asking your mom for ice cream sandwich. Okay, so when it's something a little bit more important than that, even though the no hurts just as bad because you kind of built up your, your reasoning for wanting that ice cream. Um, and I can see it still hurts. I, I can tell, I can feel you. Um, it's not as big as the you know, yes or the no for your, your raffle tickets for your school. So um, you guys, whenever you're thinking about raising money for something important, ask why it's important to you and find a story and then that's what you ask, that's what you lead with, okay? So um, people remember your story. You're going to get a lot more no's and you're gonna get yeses in your entire life. And so what you need to do is knowing that going in to the next you know, 30, 40, 50 years of your life is that you're gonna get no's. And if it's going to bring you down and you're going to get upset about it or mad about it or 
um, resentful about it, then you're going to live a lot of your life in those emotions. And who wants to be in those emotions, right? So I wanted to kind of walk through with you guys some really simple steps about um, once you've developed your story and you know what you're going to do and you're going to go ask this person for a raffle ticket sale or if they want to buy some Krispy Kreme donuts that your you know, uh, student council is selling to raise money for the homecoming dance, whatever it is you're selling, develop your why. So sometimes they're still going to tell you no. Like, is he still told Blake, no, don't have any. A no is a no, right? So you're going to get a no. Um, so how are you going to handle that no? So how can you accept that kind of sting that you get when you get that no? Um, so first of all, if it is, you're asking someone of power, right? You're asking someone who has something that you want. It could be a person of power, could be um, a friend that has um, the new game that you really wanna play. They are in power because they have the game that you wanna play. Or it could be your parent who is um, holding up a rule of your household, they are in, in power. Or a teacher, it could be, um, a neighborhood kid, or it could be someone that you're asking to sell a raffle ticket to, but you're asking somebody in power that um, they can tell you a yes or no. You've told them this great story and they still say no. So what I want you to do is look them in the eye, you know, and make sure that, that you are holding their contact. You're not like looking down and being sad or rolling your eyes or making a weird face, that you're looking them in the eye and showing them respect. You know, that you that you are going to respect what they are telling you and that you understand that no is is their answer at this point. So don't look away, don't, don't, you know, don't break eye contact. You're making that ask be you know, very confident in your ask and look them in the eye. And then also control your emotions. So it may hurt a little bit, like, gosh, my school really need, needs this money and I'm only asking you for ten dollars and I really think that you should do this. And so, you know, you might get a little pouty or a little sad or a little argumentative. And um, if, you're, if you're getting upset or angry, you're not listening to what the other person is saying. So you need to kind of take a little deep, bit of a deep breath and not go into that emotion so much. Um, seek to understand what that person of power is telling you. So it may be your boss. You know, one of these days you guys are going to be working for somebody. So it may be your boss. Your boss may be yourself. So you could be telling yourself no. Don't forget that. Um, but you've got to um, control those emotions so that the other, other person understands that you're really listening to what they're saying. So first step is to look them in the eye and let them understand you're listening to them. The second step is to say, okay, you know, that shows your understanding. If you say, but, or let's look at it this way, or wait, 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 then you're arguing with them. And then that person of power is probably going to dig their heels in a little bit harder when they get that argumentative tone with somebody, right? So you don't want to, um, you know, to, to hesitate with that. You want to let them know clearly and right away that you understand. Okay, I understand what you're saying to me. Take a deep breath and keep, you know, keep that composure, keep that anger or that emotion away and stay calm. You know, those t-shirts that were everywhere, stay calm and, you know, um, eat a banana, stay calm and move on, stay calm, stay calm. That's a, that's like the best mantra ever. Just stay calm. A no is not usually a personal thing. Usually a no is given out of love or respect or knowledge that that person of power knows more than you do at this time. They may know what's better for you than you know for at this time. Um, they may not have the funding or the capability like Izzy didn't have what Blake needed. So there are reasons behind someone saying no to you, right? There's not, usually people aren't doing it just to be mean and to make you mad. Um, so you want to stay calm and that allows you to know exactly what that other person is saying. So if you react angrily, that situation could get worse. But if you react calmly, 
Um, they will know that you're taking this seriously and that accepting the no gets you one step closer to a yes on the other end. So have y'all ever heard the story that, um, I mean, the saying that no, it doesn't mean not ever. No means not now. You know, Allie, I, I'm, I know that you're happy to hear that your mom is saying no, you can't, she's not saying no, you can't ever have an ice cream sandwich. She's only saying no, Allie, not now. You know, so don't take it as a, well, gosh, this is the final thing. I'll never have an ice cream sandwich again. And so just no, not now. So that's a, that's a good way to look at it. You know, it's, um, you're going to get more no's and yeses. So every time you get a no, you're one step closer to a yes. So if you can kind of think about your no's in a better way than just being really negatively, you know, thinking of them as a negative, as that dirty word. Of course, I did say at the beginning of this, that no's a dirty word and that no hurts. It is still going to sting, but if you can kind of come to accept that no is not something that is being personally an attack against you, it's usually coming from a much better place. And accepting a no this time may, may result in a yes the next time you ask. So taking it as a mature young lady that you're not getting a uh, dessert tonight, next time you ask, your mom might say yes. All right, I'm going to count on that. I might have to do some recon for you in there. Okay. Next step, if you disagree with the no, don't argue. Don't argue about it. Not right then. Take a minute, walk away, think about it, then come back and discuss it. Because if you right away disagree and jump into it, then they're going to take that as appearing angry and argumentative. And those are the things that put up walls against those people of power. You know, that teacher, that friend, that parent, that you know, even brother or sister, right? If they've got something that you're wanting, they are the ones that are in power. So plan how to approach what you're going to do and say the next time, like, gosh, how could have I said that differently? How could I have really convinced mom that, you know, because there was not this other dessert that I needed this dessert tonight. So think about how to kind of do that and plan the next time. So any questions, you guys? I know that, I know that no's happen right? So I just want to give you guys some ideas on what to do in different scenarios and how to respond appropriately so that the next time you can learn a little bit from it and the next time make a better ask. So Jake, I hadn't heard from you tonight, sir. Do you have any questions of great wisdom from tonight's presentation? I can't hear you. Okay. Anybody have any questions so far? Kind of get the drift of what I'm saying. Does it make a little bit of sense that the way you ask and the way you respond to the questions gets you results in the, in the future? So, okay. Let me take you through. Um, if you're, if you're making an ask to someone, there are three things that can happen. You get a yes. Yay, they bought the raffle tickets. I get dessert. Yay, it's a yes. And you celebrate. Then if it's an official capacity, like you're asking for money or you're asking for a donation of, say, um, music equipment or um, baseball equipment, something for a charity or your school, then you might want to follow up if somebody's giving you physical or even their time rather than just permission, which was what we were talking about in this case. Um, you might want to follow up with a thank you note, right? So that the next time you ask them for something, they're more likely to give it to you. So in the world of business, that could be asking someone um, if they're your client or if you've had a meeting with them. Um, but the same can be said for middle school and high school um, if you're doing something, say, for the yearbook and you're selling ads or you're selling those Krispy Kreme donuts like we were talking about before, a little thank you note, even a little post-it note, somewhere, some way to, to reach out and say thank you. Ah, there you go. Love it. Rise up thank you notes. Yes. <laughs> and we thank everybody that is a part of Rise Up. So we want to make sure that they um, feel appreciated. 
if they say no, and you've taken the no as a no, and you've done it appropriately, you've looked them in the eye, you've stayed calm, you've not argued, you've told them that it's okay, there's still, there's still room to get that yes later, right? So still make sure you're following up on the no's. Um, no is not, no, not ever. No is no, not now, right? So make sure you're following up on those no's as well. And if it was a big ask, say you, know, you were asking for that $5,000 for the food bank and they said, no, gosh, it's really nice to follow up with them then to say, I completely understand um, that this is not the right time to be asking for your budgetary concerns. So when can I come back? You know, don't take it as a no, be persistent, follow up and make sure you say thank you, whether you get that yes or the no. Um, hey, sometimes the yeses from somebody who's giving you an extra ice cream at night may be a big hug, you know, so that just that's, that's a good way to say thank you as well. Um, or taking out the garbage to say thank you, showing that respect to your parents that they've let you give, do something that um, they may not normally, um, maybe it's staying up an extra 30 minutes to read um, or to watch your favorite program till the very end that night. Um, there are things that we all need to be appreciative of, but also understand when that no happens, that it's a no. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's about all I've got. That's a pretty simple subject, um, but it's one that you're going to have to deal with a lot in life. Um, so the sooner you learn not to take it personally um, as a personal attack and the, and the sooner that you kind of practice those skills, um, really think about when you get a no, how could I have done that better to get a yes? And if you work on those um, interpersonal skills yourself, then it'll be, you'll be one step closer to getting that yes next time. I have a quick question. Okay, Miss Sandy. You mentioned not being emotional when you get a no. Um, what are some, or do you have any, maybe some tips on how to control that emotion? Um, I think you mentioned a couple. Um, can you recap that or maybe add some more to that? Sure. Well, I think that if you maintain that eye contact, you really have to maintain your emotion because if you're thinking about, I'm looking her in the eye, I'm not going to let my eyes get teary and I'm not going to break eye contact to, you know, close your eyes or make a face, you know, so that was the first thing we talked about was maintaining that eye contact and not rolling your eyes or looking away or looking down or, you know, your posture can always be something too. <sighs> well, uh, if you maintain that eye contact and you take a deep breath and you accept that you've got to let the person that you're talking to know that you're listening to them. So in order to do that, you've got to remain calm. So if you're asking for something, you're doing it for you, right? Or your school or something that you care about. Hopefully you're not just asking just to be asking just because somebody's told you to do so. You, hopefully you can find some meaning there, but you're wanting the best results you can get. So be mature in the ask and maybe kind of talk yourself through, okay, these could be the three things that are happening. I'll get a yes. Yay. I'll get a no. Okay. These are the things I need to look for, or I'll get a maybe, and then I'll have to follow up. So maybe before you make that big ask, do a little prep in your head and run through the scenarios of what could happen, you know? What's going to happen if I get a yes? What's going to happen if I get a no? And then how am I going to react differently? Um, but techniques, you know, deep breath. I'm a big, firm believer in a deep breath. You know, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Um, you don't want to do a big sigh like that in front of somebody, though, that you're trying to maintain your composure. But, you know, just to take a, a deep breath and, and just count just very slowly. Um, a trick that is not really about having a no, um, but one of these things in negotiating that you'll always hear, um, if someone's uh, saying, okay, well, I'm going to give you $10 for this, and you're saying, well, no, I want 15, the thing is, the person who talks first loses. So that was one of the tricks in, in negotiating. Um, it's not, it's not really a waiting game. It's though you got to take some time. You've got to let some time process. So it's not about just talking to cover up the space. It's about really trying to seek and understand why that person has said no. And you can ask a question, you know, clarifying question, 
um, but don't do it as an argumentative. Do it as a, I'm seeking to understand what you're what you're saying to me, so that the next time you have a better ammunition, a better way to to get that yes. That's awesome. I wanted to share really quickly um, something that has helped me tremendously too is sure. I read a book. Actually, I listened to it on Audible. I'm looking at it right now, so I got the title correct, and it's called Rejection Proof. And the author basically talks about this. Um, I don't remember how many, like how much time, what the time frame was he did this, but it was a really long time, like months, years, where he would go ask random crazy questions to people. He would be at the donut store and say, hey, can I have a free donut? And he's going to get a no, right? More than likely, unless right. it's National Donut Day. So <laughs> he practiced getting those no's so that when he was legitimately asking a question where he might get a no, but it's a, a, a real good question. Um, he's not going to take it as personal or it won't hurt as much. So he became rejection proof and it helped him with those big questions. I love that. I love that. That kind of, that kind of goes with the theory that every no you get, you're one step closer to a yes. Exactly. So, um, you know, the, the thing that that doesn't address, though, are those big, big asks that are very highly emotional, like, what if you're asking for someone's hand in marriage? Or what if you're asking out to somebody to go to be your boyfriend or girlfriend? You know, those rejections can really be emotional, right? Can really hit in the heart if you got a rejection there. So I think that your amount of prep should be consistent with the amount of um, the, the strength of the rejection or the exception. You know, think about it that way. Um, the Blake probably didn't give much thought to asking his sister about the, the aluminum pop top, right? Didn't probably give much thought to that. Just wanted to throw that out. But if he were going to a uh, canning place and they had a lot of extras of those on the floor and he could get 10,000 of them in a day instead of just two or three from Izzy, then that might carry a little bit more of a punch that he would not, might need to prep for a little bit more, right? So there are, there are different, different ways to weigh all of that and, um, you know, your approach and your um, pre preparedness um, should be equal to the journey that you're going on. So the S that are made. You guys are going to be great. I have every confidence you're going to get a lot of yeses in your life. Just remember that there are some no's that come naturally with that. And that um, being able to kind of understand that and accept that is a big step towards um, making a happier self <laughs> and learning how to do be, become rejection proof. I like that. Absolutely. Do you guys have any questions, anybody? Do you have any um, tips that you've learned along the way that maybe Miss Shelley didn't mention that you would like to share? No, you haven't much mastered the technique of asking yet? I have. Oh, you have. So <laughs> Allie, how many um, uh, raffle tickets have you sold? Um, I know for a fact I've sold at least five. There you go. And I'm not sure anymore. But I'm very, like, I really want to sell them because if we sell 2,515 or something, we get a whole week out of uniform. So. Okay, so let me ask you, is that more important to the person, to your neighbor, or the fact that it's going to provide scholarship money? Scholarship money. <laughs> Now to your mom or to your aunt or, to, you know, to one of your best friend's parents that you're trying to sell that um, raffle ticket to the week out of school, they know how um, out of uniform, they know how important that is to you. So that might motivate them, but your neighbor stick to the story of why it's good for the school <laughs> instead of getting the, the week um, with free dress. <laughs> I love that though. You're mastering it. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions, if you ever want to reach out to me, um, uh, Rise Up has my information. I'm happy to talk you through if um, you want to role play or something, if you've got a big ask that you've got coming up, especially when you start getting into fundraising for your schools um, and for Rise Up, 
we're going to be doing some of that. So, um, yeah, let's let's role play. Let's think about different scenarios and get you get you prepared to um, get the way to the yes and not have so many no's. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shelly, for being here tonight and for sharing all of that. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and Allie has volunteered to write the recap tonight to get an ice cream bar. So she was <laughs> negotiating on the chat just a moment ago. Um, <laughs> there you go, Allie. <laughs> so um, if there are no questions, then I think that's good. That's it. And that was fabulous. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing tonight, Shelly. Absolutely. And it's my pleasure. Thank you. Um, you guys have a wonderful night next week. Oh, I always try to remember to have this um, ready. Oh, we have Emery Rutledge coming to join us next week. She's a teenager that I think all four of you know, um, who has written two novels and she's only what, 16, 17. Um, wow. So she's going to talk about why reach out for your goals? Why try to reach those goals? Even if you're just a teenager, what's the importance of those? What are the steps that she took, et cetera? So that's going to be exciting next week. And so I hope, no, I know I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to cut this part of the recording off, <laughs> but okay. Awesome. I will let everybody go. Thank you so All much right. again, Shelly. Nice Bye. to meet you guys. Thanks for your help tonight. Talk to you soon, Sandy. Okay, bye. bye.